Hi everyone, uh, my name's Ali and I work here at Wattbike with Eddie, who's going to be the expert for um, today's webinar. Um, sorry, just bear with me one second. There we go. So yeah, thank you for joining us today um, as we look at how to administer or undertake the uh, What Bike Health Assessment. Um, if you did miss the other two webinars that we've done so far, we do have recordings available on the What Bike YouTube channel where you can access those two. Um, today's webinar is going to be a little bit different to the other sessions that we've done as we are going to do a live demonstration of the What Bike Health Assessment, the training plans and also the 10 minute progress check to show you the different steps of taking someone through the assessment process. So the session today is again going to be run by Eddie, who is our lead sports scientist and also the creator of the health assessment. And we'll also be joined by our colleague Amy, who has kindly agreed to put herself through the testing process live for you guys. Um, and this is actually the first time we are running the health assessment live. So please do bear with us if we run into any problems. Um, and as always, if you guys have any issues with sound or visual, please do let us know in the chat and we will try and sort this as quickly as possible. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Eddie and Amy for the run through, which is going to take around 40 to 45 minutes. And we will, of course, answer any questions you may have on the health assessment and anything else what bike related after the demonstration. Um, so if you do have any questions, please do send them through using the Q&A messenger and we will answer all of these at the end. Um, so thank you and over to you, Eddie. Uh, thank you, Ali. Um, welcome everybody. Good evening or good morning, wherever you, you may be in the world. Uh, as uh, Ali said, this is the uh, third uh, webinar in, in this particular series. And this evening we're going to try um, and do a live demonstration of the uh, CRF test. Just before we do that, I wanted to uh, do a quick recap. The first two uh, webinars, there's only four slides. So Ali, the first slide. So if you remember back to the uh, first webinar, uh, we were looking at the link between physical exercise um, and the immune system uh, and preventing uh, some of the non-communicable diseases that um, we seem to be suffering from, particularly in the West, uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, the obesity crisis that we do have in the West, heart disease uh, and the like. And it's been brought to the fore by the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's not, um, not new. Uh, it's been known for a long time that there is a link between the lack of exercise uh, and um, immune protection. Next slide, Ali, please. So we did talk about the lack of exercise. And uh, if you put the lack of exercise together with obesity, it's probably the combination that is uh, the number one uh, problem uh, around the world. Um, and it does shorten people's lives as you can see on that slide, between three and five years. And um, particularly um, if you've got some of the other diseases that go along um, with, with the lack of uh, exercise. You may recall me saying, these are UK and, and USA figures, that over 60% of men and women in the UK and the US are overweight or obese. And in fact, the obesity um, in the UK, if you get, just use the obese figures, uh, is close to 30%. And it's, it's over 40% uh, in the USA. Activity levels are pretty low. Uh, two thirds of the population do do the minimum amount of exercise, but it is the minimum. Um, and particularly worrying um, is, is, is children. That's down at about 47% uh, getting the minimum exercise. So we're building problems uh, along the way if we don't get uh, the levels of activity uh, up from, from its current levels. Next slide, Ali. And I did go through some of the research, and this was a particular paper I, I referred to because it was a, a longitudinal um, uh, piece of research over 46 years. And it showed that um, you can extend your uh, life quite significantly if you maintain your fitness levels uh, and keep your body mass at, at the right level. And some of these figures are quite staggering. Uh, we talked about that, that VO2 max um, figure, which I will describe in a little bit more detail when we look at the test as well. But just one point increase in your VO2 max, which is easily achievable just by losing some body mass, to be honest, gives you 45 days of extended life. You can see that eight point increase uh, one year. But in that particular survey, they were talking about two 
uh, to five years extra active life by keeping yourself fit throughout your life. So that's a, a, quick, a quick summary of where we got to. All right, we're gonna go into um, a live demonstration. So just give us um, a few seconds to set this up. Um, so we're gonna ask, um, we're gonna ask uh, Amy to share her uh, screen with you. You wanna do that, Amy, for me, please? Yeah, no problem. Is that working for you, Amy? Do you need me to stop sharing mine? Let's see. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Here we go. Can everyone see that okay? If anyone's having any problems, please do just let us know. All right, so what we're going to do first, we're going to go um, um, uh, bottom right. We're going to go into Amy's profile. So Amy, do you want to go into your profile? So the first thing we need to do is make sure uh, that the basic information uh, is in the profile so you can do uh, the test. Um, you can see, I'll go for the middle of the page there, you've got preferences. You can do it by um, uh, FTP, functional threshold power, or max minute power, but the actual test itself does max minute power, and then you can uh, switch between the two once you've done the test. Now the user data, so some of this needs to be very precise. Don't worry about the max heart rate and, and the max minute power in there. Uh, some of these are preset when you first set up uh, your profile. But when you do the test, the test will automatically update those figures for us. But what you need to get right is the body mass, the weight. So you see aim is uh, 52 uh, kilograms there. The gender, uh, obviously female. Now fitness level. Fitness level is a really key one to the starting point for the test. So get the fitness level right. There is a, a fail safe that if you've got the wrong fitness level in there and you go into the test, you've got the opportunity to change the start point to the run rate and you'll see that. But Amy's um, uh, fitness level club, just to remind you, you've got beginner, active, very active, a club cyclist, um, a national cyclist and a world-class uh, cyclist in there. Ignore the army user um, details there. And you need a date of birth because the algorithm uses the body mass, the gender, um, the fitness level, and the date of birth to do the scoring system uh, for this. So we're happy with, we're happy with that, uh, that setup that Amy's uh, got in there. All right, the next thing, Amy, would you go up to workouts, please? And scroll until you find tests. And then we're gonna find the health assessment submax test. All right, so here's the, the profile for, for Amy um, based on the metrics that she input into the, the profile. And you see that start watts there, uh, based on Amy's profile, is 100 watts. We're going to ramp each minute by 15 watts. Now you'll notice there's a plus and minus either side of those. Um, if you feel that figure is too high or too low, it can be changed. Again, with the ramp, rocks, ramp walks, again, you can do that as well. Uh, so there's options there if you think the figures uh, are too high or, or too low. Generally speaking, if you get the rest of the data, the particular fitness level set up, that should be adequate for your purposes. All right, Amy, do you want to so go to the top right? We're going to click into the actual test itself. Um, the first thing uh, you see on there is the, 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 the 100 watt start point, and that's the only thing we really need to look at. Uh, at the moment. Now, Amy, you need to connect your heart rate belt. We've got um, uh, the bike connected. There we go. So please make sure your heart rate belt is connected and your bike is connected. Now, at this stage, I should explain that Amy is on the, the Atom. You can do this test on any of our product range. So if you've got a Pro, Trainer, Icon, or any of the Atoms, you can do this test but Amy happens to, to have a, a, an atom. And we can do this in what's called ergo mode. And I'll explain a little bit more about that as we get going. All right, Amy, are you ready to start? Yep. All right, let's start the test rolling. All right, so Amy's gonna take that up and settle it down at 100 watts. 
I know the mantra when you're doing these tests is to keep that green, just take that other bit aim to keep it green. And it's quite important this, that you stay as close to the 100 watts or whatever your start point is uh, throughout the whole of the minute. I'll come to, to a question we had uh, by email uh, from Duncan, who I think is listening, um, about um, how you make sure that the test doesn't cut out. So you need to keep this very, very close to that 100 mark. You'll notice we've, um, this is in ergo mode, so the cadence will always be around about 88 to 90 uh, on this test. Um, we mentioned last time, if you have a uh, pro trainer icon, all right, so we have charts that you can use to calculate this. So there's the beeps for the next minute. So Amy now needs to set this to 115. And we'll be watching the heart rate as well. You can see Amy's heart rate's um, pretty, pretty low. Uh, we know Amy's metrics very, very well, so um, I didn't know where she is on this test. So we're on at minute two. And again, so in minute two is at 115 watts. He's having 15 watts on, and Amy has to give it 115. Now this is really important. Don't let the watches drop below the previous minute. If it drops below the previous minute, it will automatically cut the test out. It is a rising wattage test, so you need to keep the wattage green at all times. And it's not that difficult to do once you get used to, 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 to your, your watt by whatever version it is. So Amy's keeping that very, very nice, neatly on 115, as you can see. Heart rate's not doing an awful lot yet. Now, I haven't asked Amy any questions yet. I usually, before I start asking the rider where they feel they are, because remember, this is a, an RPE. Um, scale you've got to use to terminate this test. We're going to go up to uh, level 7 out of 10 um, and it will be about 85% of, uh, of, of heart rate. I usually let it go a couple of minutes before I start asking the question and then I use it, usually do it after 30 seconds into the minute. So anyway, we're coming to two and a half minutes on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, 1 being easy, 10 being hard. Where do you think you are? Probably between a 2 and a 3. 2 and a 3, I'll take that. And a point here, um, it's always up to the tester uh, to terminate these tests. Uh, be wary uh, that your client might feel it's too hard or too soft. Um, you have to make the decision, and we can't see it. We normally, we'd, we'd be visually close, and we'd be able to see the reaction. And we're into lap four. Now, we hope you fix the, when you're fixing these tests to get the right start point and finish point, um, you want to probably go between eight and 12 um, legs. 10 is probably ideal on this. We'll just see where we go with, with, with Amy on this. Uh, we can see heart rate's going up a little bit now. We're on 145. We're keeping this very, very steady. Looking really good. Okay, Amy, scale of one to 10. One being easy, 10 being hard. Where are you, do you think? Make a three now, probably. A three. Okay, we'll take that, a three. I sometimes have in my mind that um, what the rider's telling me is not quite uh, correct. Um, so I might think in my mind that's either a two or a four, but I never tell the client that generally. But I will tell you that today just because um, it's relevant to the conversation. Going to lap five, not going to one to 60 at watts. Again, heart rates. Um, up a little bit, but not too much. We're getting, getting a nice heart rate curve coming in there. You feeling okay, Amy? Yeah, good. Good. Always check we have a client because you want some feedback from them. They want to be able to um, talk to you quite easily at this stage. Should be no stress going on. All right, coming up 30 seconds. Scale of 1 to 10, Amy, where do you think you are? Um... Three and a half. Oh, three and a half. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. Yes. Oh, you, can give, you can give. You can give. You can give half scores. No great problem. Between three and four, we'll we'll, we'll take that one. Yeah. Okay. Looking good. Keeping it green. I do emphasise when you're doing these tests, just keep it green. If you keep it green, you know the test will be valid. Okay, lap six. Now this is a critical um, lap because uh, the, the test would only be valid if you do six minutes, minimum of six minutes. 
Uh, so it will tell you, there we go, one more ramp to reach minimum number of ramps. So we really want at least six ramps. And that's why it's important not to start too high. Um, I prefer to start too low because the early stages can be part of a, a little warm up. Um, but Amy, as we know, we know is okay. We're going to get uh, probably nearly 10 minutes out of Amy on this one. All right, Amy, scale of uh, one to 10, where do you think you are? Uh, four and a bit. <laughs> four and a bit this time. Four and a bit. I'll take that one as well. So 175 watts. Don't forget we're on an atom doing this test. We're in ergo mode. So all Amy has to do is concentrate on, on making the wattage. Okay, so we have a valid test. We've got at least uh, six minutes worth of data there. But we're going to carry on. So we're at 190 watts. So that's that 7 out of 10 score. Just reminding you that when you reach 7 out of 10, it's not a max test. It is a sub-max test. We're not going to make anybody fall off the bike. I think Amy's done enough of that. <laughs> so we're at 190 watts. Okay, scale of 1 to 10, Amy. Where do you think you are? Five. A five. So we're getting up there. We're getting up there. But it's still looking okay. So 190 watts, keeping it green. No great dramas. About to go to the next lap. All right, 205 watts, Amy. See the heart rate's been rising over the last few minutes. We're now at 155. Just reminding you there about the seven out of 10. Feeling okay, Amy? Yeah, good. Good? Getting harder. <laughs> Getting harder, you're still talking back to me. And I suspect you're still got a smile on your face as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always. All right, scale of one to 10, where do we think we are now? Uh, coming up to a six. Yeah, I think you probably are. Up yes, I'll six, go with it. Yeah. Around a six, yeah. It really is, um, this one to 10 is an art for. The more you do these tests, the more you'll find them at the right level. All right, lap nine, at 220 watts. I'm suspecting we're not, <coughs> excuse me, we're not too far off. Where do you think you are, Amy, scale of one to 10? Six and a half. <laughs> Six and a half. <clears throat> I think this might be the final minute looking at the heart rate now. Settle down a little bit, we're okay. You still feeling okay then? Yeah, good. Good. I think we're about to go to the final minute probably. Okay, two, three, five. And you'll notice that um, uh, Amy's um, RPM now is up to 95, 96. That's where you'd expect it to go uh, for, for a sub-max test. It's not a max test. Max test, we go to 100 plus, depending on the type of, uh, of rider. Okay, Amy, where do you think you are on a scale of 1 to 10? 7. 7. I thought you might be. Yeah, okay, so we're going to... Finish it after this minute, we've got 25 seconds to go. And then we'll have a look at what the data looks like. I would say, if I was testing Amy, because Amy is an established um, cyclist, I'd probably do a max test on, on Amy. <laughs> this, this is quite easy for Amy today. Here we go. So let it go through into the next lap. And then Amy, if you want to stop pedaling, and then stop. 
So but the, it only takes complete minutes, so the, the few seconds over is not a great problem. All right, so now we have, um, we have a scroll. So if you want to just scroll it up a little bit from me, Amy, so we can see. Come down again, come down again. Uh, uh, go, go, go up, go up. Down a slight touch. <laughs> I just want to see the CIR score. Uh, go down a bit, Amy. Bring it, scroll it up. Uh, keep going. Go right to the top. Um, then. Sorry, right to the, go to the top. <laughs> go to the top. There we go. There we go. Yeah. All right. So Amy's um, uh, age, um, gender, and body mass related uh, score, uh, cardiovascular fitness score, is the 90th percentile, not unexpected. Um, in the in the top echelon uh, for her age and gender, um, the met value. Um, remember, the met value is the VO2 max, which we'll scroll down to C, divided by 3.5. We use it an awful lot in the um, medical world. Um, you'll see that uh, Amy's max minute power, based on that 235 watts the termination point, is 279 watts. And the max heart rate is shown as, uh, is that 199? Yeah, 199. Um, power per kilo, quite high for, say, is only 52 kilos, so 5.36 uh, watts. And they see that, that relative VO2 max, 57.46 milliliters per kilogram uh, per minute, which translates into that met value of 16.42. All right, there's quite a lot of other stuff in the summary, but that's the bits we need to see. Um, we're hoping now, if the technology works, because um, it does rely on um, uh, our hub. So if you want to come out of that, Amy, and go back to your profile. All right, we've got um, the MMP of 279. It's not actually updated the max heart rate yet to 196. Um, that's probably the delay in, in going to the hub. Just go to your history for me, Amy. Yeah, it's actually there, so it's, it's, it's ready to upload to the hub. Um, once it gets to the hub, it will change the heart rate to 199 from that 196. The 279 was already in there anyway. Oh, so we're, we're, oh, we're there, we're there. Um, 199, yeah, on the, on the score, right. Okay, good. All right, so now we've got the score, we can go to the, uh, the plans um, and look at what Amy would do um, if that, if she was going to do one of these plans. So if you go to plans, Amy, and then health plans. Now, because Amy's score is so high, we'll go through these, but if you just want to tap on beginner one for me first. So beginner one, if your score was 30 uh, or less, you would go to the beginner one plan. You go to beginner two plan for me. And if your score was 50 uh, or, or less, you go to beginner two. Go to the intermediate plan for me. If your score is 70 or less, you go to the intermediate training plan. And the final one, the advanced plan, Amy. So if you go to the advanced plan, if you've got a score of 70 or more, and Amy has uh, 90, uh, you would go to the advanced plan. So we're going to stay on this plan. Amy, do you want to scroll down for the first session? All right, so the, uh, we'll just let me explain the, uh, the, number, the, the, the plan itself. So the, it's a 12-week plan. It shows 13. Because the first week, we've got two introductory leading sessions. So the first real week of the plan um, uh, is, is week two. Now, the number of sessions in, the, in each plan um, goes up, of course. Beginning one is, is, is three sessions, as is beginner two. The intermediate is four sessions. And then advanced is, is, is five sessions. Uh, but you can spread them out over, over a longer period than, than, than the 12 weeks if you wanted to. All right, I just want to show you what comes on screen now. Uh, so, Amy, do you want to go into um, the week one first session? So, on screen, you'll see what that session looks like, uh, a little histogram uh, there. But the most notable thing here is it's now put in um, some targets for Amy based on that test. So, it's picked up from the profile. Um, what power, heart rate, and cadence she needs for the first part of this, uh, this session. So this is the first three minutes of this session. Um, she's going to have to keep 111 power, a heart rate below 124, and a cadence uh, at around about 90 RPM. Amy, do you want to connect your heart rate bells? Yep.
Do you want to play? Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, there we go. Sometimes it takes time. Don't right, panic. Play. <laughs> right, let's do, let's go play. And there we go. All right, do you want to scroll across for me, Amy? There we go. Right, so this is the screen we need to be looking at. Uh, you can scroll back and forth the screens, particularly the pedal pedal technique screen, because that's really, really important. Not part of this particular webinar, uh, but don't forget it is there, and it's a real key element of being a very efficient cyclist. So here we have um, the, 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 the three parameters here, power, heart rate, and cadence. Uh, Amy's task is initially to keep the RPM and the power in the green. We want to keep the heart rate below that 124, so amber, amber is fine, now it's gone green. And what you're trying to do is keep them all um, in, in the green, or at least the heart rate um, in, in the low amber rather than the amber above. Uh, so you're going to try to do that. And you'll, we're, going to take, we're not going to do all of this session, we're going to do this first three minutes and let it trigger over into the next part of the session. So you can see how it changes uh, with the next part of it. Don't forget, this is all being picked up from uh, Amy's um, Submax uh, test. It's come from her profile uh, and put the numbers in that are appropriate to, to Amy. So whatever your result is from a test, it will populate the training plan correctly for you. So we're halfway through um, uh, this first three minutes. This should seem pretty easy for you, Amy. Yes, nice and steady. Nice and steady. Now each workout is made up, this is part of the initial warm up for this particular workout. Each uh, workout is complete. It has a warm up, then it has some work, and then it has a cool down. So every element is covered within the, within the workout. And it, it, so it just rolls on continuously through, through, through the session. Okay, another minute to go in this one. See, Amy's really good at keeping this at 90 RPM, uh, 111 watts, and that heart rate is nice and nice and steady below 124. Looking really good. And watch for when it counts down. The next uh, portion, of this next segment of this workout will then come on screen. You'll see the numbers change. And Amy will have to react to those, those changes. Makes it very easy to follow plans or sessions when you've got, uh, got it like this. All right, 10 seconds left. Right, so you can now see um, the second segment, uh, we've gone to 95 RPM, uh, the power's gone to 125 uh, watts, and we've got a, a better heart rate allowance of 129. This is, uh, this is live, this is how our software looks, this is how the app looks, this is exactly what you'll see on uh, your iPhone, your iPod, uh, or on your Android uh, device. There's nothing special about this particular software we're showing you. It's not a, um, a hidden software, what back software. This is the live app software. All right, uh, Amy, do you want to stop that one now? I think probably yeah. got a picture on that. Green is great. I love, it. I love it when it's green. So you try to keep everything <laughs> green. Um, I'm never too worried about amber, to be honest. If you go slightly amber on some of those parameters, but if it goes red, then you need to take some action to bring things back into normal. And it could be as much, it could be your heart rate's gone too high. Uh, my advice is always uh, keep the RPM and lower the resistance a little bit until your heart rate comes back in control. Over time, um, you'll find that um, the parameters will come into line. You'll have good days and bad days. Just watch what's happening with the colours. Uh, and respond uh, accordingly. All right, Amy, do you want to come out of that then? And go back to workouts. 
All right, so there is another test uh, which you can um, have a look uh, at after 12 weeks. And I, I do stay after 12 weeks. Um, so normally you wouldn't do it straight after a sub max. Um, as we say, Amy is a quite an accomplished rider, so we have no great problems on this. And it's the 10 minute health assessment test. And what that does, it tells you um, whether you've improved or not. And it is a straightforward, simple message. When, if you complete it in the parameters that are gonna be shown, it will mean that you've improved your fitness. And I'll explain why when we, we, we set it up. All right, Amy, do you want to um, go into that 10 minute test for me? And let's um, link your heart rate. That's good, that's live, all right. All right, so on screen, that's the numbers. 181 uh, watts, 161 heart rate, and a suggested 95 RPM. That is variable, depending on the rider. And those numbers are based on the original test that Amy has done. So it's taken from the profile. And if you bear in mind that we would only do this after 12 weeks, if you'd have done 12 weeks of training, you'd expect if you did another submax test, that your, your metrics would have improved. So this is set at a lower level, if you like, because you've done 12 weeks of training. The 181 watts is 65% of Amy's 279 watts. 161 is 82% of uh, Amy's max heart rate. And Amy's task is to ride for 10 minutes and uh, keep them green and keep them very closely green because uh, we've put some tight parameters in there, particularly on the, the power side. But anyway, let's start it, let's start it running so you can see how, uh, how it looks. Amy. Yeah. Yeah. that up to 95. That's it, okay. All right, so you are trying to keep them green, but particularly, um, you can be a variable on the resistance level, uh, on the gear um, and on the RPM if you want to, it depends on your preferences there. But if you've done the 12 week training program, uh, doing it at 95 RPM shouldn't be a problem because the, uh, the leg speeds we use in the training plan will develop that ability. So Amy's got to keep it close to 181 watts. And that's where you start looking initially because you'd expect the heart rate to be okay for quite a while. Don't let it deviate too much on the wattage side or the test will fail. So it's got to be green um, all, all the way. Now with the heart rate, yes, you want to keep that all green. There is a slight allowance in there where it will allow you to pass it because on any one day the heart uh, will reflect what your body's feeling. Uh, so there will be a slight allowance over the 161, but not an awful lot. So there you go, keeping the green on there. We'll just do a couple of minutes so you can see how it looks. But again, very familiar looking um, um, profile. This is the live app. Uh, you've got the three power heart rate and cadence showing there. You've got them um, visually with the colors, and you've also got them numerically uh, just below. Everything you need is there to control for that 10 minute uh, uh, test. We just let it run for two minutes, another 30 seconds, so you can see how it's going. And you should be able to pass this. If you've done the original test correctly, you've done a 12 week training program, uh, everybody should pass this and then they can move on for a retest. So you retest, you do another sub mark to see where your new numbers are. I would expect, uh, particularly people who are just starting out beginners, um, to be able to make rapid improvements and get rapid gains in their CRF scores so they can move up the plans. And the plans are designed so you can move through them as you, if you want, listen to the second seminar. Um, I went through how the plans were structured so you can, there's a progression from beginner one to beginner two, to intermediate and to the advanced plan. It's worth mentioning there's also a maintenance plan in there, uh, which I wouldn't recommend you do until you've done at least a beginner one and two, and maybe done the inter intermediate. And if you want to just maintain your fitness, maintain your CRF score, you could do the maintenance plan. Okay, thanks Amy, do you want to come out of that? Okay, so Amy, that, that, that hasn't passed you, obviously, because <laughs> you didn't get 10 minutes. <laughs> no, <it> failed. <laughs> so, you want to come out of that for me? Okay, so just the final, I just want to do a final uh, re recap. 
Um, if you want to go back into your profile, Amy. Now, now we've got Amy's numbers um, uh, in, in, in there. You can, uh, if you want to go edit, Amy, for me. Um, no, just go back, sorry, go back, be done. Go, go, just go back to your profile. Um, you'll see the preferences there. If you want to, you can, um, and, and, and our app um, is, is set up so you can switch between, uh, if you want to train by function on fresh air power, or maximum you can switch between the two. Just switch your preferences for me, Amy. All right. And you'll notice that if you go to the user data, it's already um, rejigged the data to show the functional threshold heart rate for Amy 163 and the FTP of 199. Switch back to maximum minute power for me. And they see the, the original numbers in there. So you can, uh, from the test, you can either train by functional threshold power or max minute power, and then the workout will pick up uh, what preferences uh, you have for all of that. Okay, thank you. I think that's um, all we need to do today. We are now um, open for questions, I think, are we? Yes. Um, thank you, Amy. Amazing effort. Right. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I'll start sharing my screen instead. Just bear with me one second. I saw a few questions um, coming through on the top of my screen there. Yeah, um, here we go. Yeah, um, so we do have um, two questions actually that were sent in ahead of today. So we'll just cover off those quickly and then we'll go okay. over to your questions that you guys have sent in just now. Um, so we did have two questions from Mark actually. Um, the first question is, um, do the training plans link to a training stress score? And if so, what training stress score does each plan aim to provide each week? And what is the ramp rate? So just Eddie, for, for those of us who don't know what a training stress score is, do you want to just cover that off a bit? Um, yeah, it, 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 they're not um, shown uh, on those plans. Um, we could do, we could do. If you remember, um, from last week's webinar, uh, those plans are built around um, uh, met hours um, and intensities. But we, we could, I mean, I could put a training stress, stress, stress score on there. Um, training stress score will we'll look at the, the overall loading of it. Um, I'll have a look and see how, how quickly we can do that. But yes, it can be, it can be done. Okay. Um, then the next question from Mark was, um, do the plans include recovery weeks and what is your general view on recovery periods for middle-aged athletes of 40 to 50 years of age? Yeah, recover, recovery, 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 most important thing. Um, yes, there are, um, uh, there's, there's always um, one recovery session in there um, and then days off are, 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 are paramount, particularly the older you get. So the beginner one and two uh, are three sessions a week. Uh, beginner, uh, sorry, the intermediate is four sessions and the uh, advanced is five sessions. But even on the advanced, um, two days off, if you were just doing purely walk bike stuff, if you were doing, and, and I've got athletes following the advanced plan, if you're doing road rides as well, then you need to spread them out a little bit. So you do get your rest, uh, rest periods uh, in, in there. I have got um, riders who do the 12 weeks over 24 weeks, so we spread it out over 24 weeks, so that we can fit the road rides in, uh, in, in there. Recovery is probably the most important thing you can do. And the older you, you get, probably the more recovery you need. You need to be more careful uh, about that. Your body will adapt better with recovery, if that's where it does the adaption to the training stimulus uh, when you're recovering. So yes, we've got um, inbuilt recovery sessions into those plans. Um, have a scroll through them um, and, and have a look. You'll recognize the recovery sessions in there. Uh, the sessions are color coded. Um, the darker the colors, uh, the more intense it is. So if you see the very light colors, then that is the recovery stuff in, in the plan. Okay, thank you. Um, so we've had a few questions come through just in terms of the seven out of 10. So there's quite a few people asking, you know, they're finding it pretty difficult to judge. So what is, is seven like a sustainable effort for a specific time? Would a 10 be like a flat out, but for how long? So yeah, we've had a few yeah. questions in terms of right. seven out of 10. 
Yeah, the most difficult thing to, to assess, I mean, I've, I've, been doing, I've done thousands of these tests, but amazing how quickly uh, you, you can do it. Now, first to say we use, I, I use the one to 10 uh, scale rather than the one to 20. Uh, it's too many decisions to make when you've got one, one to 20. And don't forget, there is another, another element to this. If you know somebody's max heart rate, just take the 25%. Because uh, that's the other part of the, uh, the test. So if you've ever done a max test on somebody, any subsequent tests can be at 85%. But level seven. Level seven is, um, is where um, the rider is beginning uh, to work hard. Yes, they are beginning to work harder. It's still not a 10. A 10 would be um, max. So you, you, you can't go any more. You'd get to 10 and, and you, you, you'd stop. You'd stop. So that's 10. So seven is that, that level at which um, they're beginning to uh, gasp and sweat a little bit more. Then you're going to have to think about the answer they're going to give you. You'll say, where are you? Are you on a scale of one to ten? And you'll find they'll just that they'll 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 think a little bit before they give you the answer. Um, it's 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 easier the more you do it. I can guarantee you that. But it, it's certainly not max. You know, ten is ten is max. You're well off max. You're at that 80, 85 percent level. But you have to do it time and time again to get that, that level right. I think I said um, last week, if you think something's gone too far, there is a way of backtracking it so you can use the previous minute just by going into the what bike hub and looking at the session. Uh, so don't be afraid to do that. If you think something's gone too far, then you can go back into the data and, and, and backtrack it. If anybody's interested in how to do that, if they email Ali or, or me, um, I, I can explain how that, that process works. Yeah, we can answer any other questions that you guys may have if you just send them in to marketing at botbike.com. But I did think about something else, Eddie, because obviously the scale that we're talk talking about is the Borg scale of exertion. Yeah, yes. It is, yes, yes, yes. 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 yes the Borg uh, rate of perceived exertion, yes. Yeah, so I mean, that's widely available. I think if, even if you Google it, it gives you a few examples of what sort of things you can look out for. I think if people reach a seven or eight, um, so, you know, there's a few examples there as well um, that you can take a look at. Oh, we have a chat, Ali, as well. So we can, we can, we can send a chat to anybody who wants or we can send one. Okay, perfect. Um, so the next question is, I, I know you briefly touched on this before, but Stuart would like to know um, if you find your heart rate is higher than the target, but you feel okay, should you keep going or reduce the watts or the cadence to achieve the target? I would um, re re reduce the resistance, uh, keep the cadence, reduce the resistance, to keep the legs going um, to bring it back into to target. Um, the, the, uh, and that will reduce your power. Um, a lot of people don't like doing that. But over time, um, things will equal out. The heart is a great barometer of, of what the body's feeling. Um, and what you don't want to be doing, if you're doing a session, your heart rate should be at, I don't know, 140, and it's suddenly 160, then you're training in the wrong zone for that particular session. Uh, so my golden rule is keep the cadence, keep those legs spinning because the body loves leg speed and keeps the blood flowing and take the resistance down slightly and, and until the heart's back in control. Okay, that makes sense. Um, next, we have a question from Lee who is asking, what is the best test to do for a total beginner I'm over 19 stone and every test I see says moderate to high level of fitness. Um, yes, um, I, I would always start, um, if you can do a sub, one of our submax tests, the health assessment submax test, you can start very low. So you can start at 50 watts or 70 watts. So even if you're very, very active and it gives you a higher start figure, just alter the figure and start very, very low. Um, and, and, and just ramp it up until you figure out that um, RP of seven and then finish the test uh, there. Um, it may well be you, you shouldn't do a test until you've done a little bit of, of, of just gentle spinning anyway. Do two or three weeks of gentle spinning, very low resistance or an atom of low gear, um, and just get used to how the bike works and get your legs spinning before you start to test. Um, the other thing you can do is do other forms of exercise as well, just to get yourself really, really, really fit to do the test. Um, you don't necessarily need to be fit to do the lower end tests. The way we design the health assessment test at the lower end were for people who are ex extremely unfit, which is why we've got those start points of 50 watts and 70 watts, 
with 10 watt ramps. But you need to be able to complete at least six minutes uh, on, on those. If you can't get to the six minute, then you know you've still got some work to do before you can even test. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. So would you say that out of all the tests that we have, that the submax test would be the most appropriate for unfit people? Oh, absolutely. The health assessment, well, the health assessment particularly, our normal submax test um, has slightly different criteria in it. Uh, oh, only slightly, but you're far better with a health assessment test because it has lower start points. Okay, perfect. So yeah, Lee, give the um, health assessment test a go. Um, and if you do have any more questions about that, just send us an email. Um, the next question that we have is from Mary, and she would like to know, are the training plan wattage targets related to what bike training zones? Um, they're related to maximum mini training zones or functional uh, threshold power training zones, depending on which your preference is. So yes. Basically, yeah, so the answer is yes, yes. Yeah. The zones, the zones come out of the test. So um, when you've done the test, it gives you your max heart rate, uh, your max minute power, um, and then uh, the zones t tipple out of that. So when you go into a plan, the zones that are in there um, are um, are the correct ones. And it would also be the same if you did a standalone workout, right? That your training zones are updated based on the test. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So whatever you, you whatever you've got set as your um, max heart rate MMP or threshold heart rate and FTP will filter through on all the other sessions as well. Okay. Um, let's see what other questions we have. So Lee, great series. Thanks for the feedback, Lee. Appreciate it. Um, he would like to know. So say someone was to finish the advanced plan, what would you recommend as a next step? Oh, yeah, good, good question, good question. Um, do the advanced plan again. Um, I, yeah, I, I have athletes who have done the advanced plan a couple of times. Um, but after that, you really need a bespoke program. You need to get yourself a coach um, and get a bespoke program. It depends what you're training for. So if you're training just to be fit and you, you, you happen to have the ability to be an advanced um, rider, you could go in, into the maintenance plan which is also a good recovery because if you've done the advanced plan, there's a lot of work in there. And particularly if you do it, you know, a couple of runs, run, run through it. Um, and doing the maintenance plan will just keep you ticking over and keep you fit while you decide uh, what next. But it does depend on what you're training for as well. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we have another question from Sarah. Um, they're asking four sessions on a training plan. Is it best to leave it in ergo mode or change to gear mode so that I can change resistance as needed? I often find that to hit the cadence goal, I am way over the power goal. Yeah, um, I think you, 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 you switch between the two depending on what, 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 what you're doing. You saw us do that test in ergo mode and for Amy that worked pretty well. Um, you can also do that test in gear mode and we do have tables uh, for that. Um, Amy's preference um, is for 90 RPM or thereabouts as a minimum. Um, but if you want to do it um, the way we do it, say on the pro, the trainer and the icon, where you have a rising RPM, you have one gear and a rising RPM, then you can go into gear mode and we can give you um, the table uh, for the, that gear mode. And when you're in a session, um, yeah, if you find that the ergo mode uh, is not doing what you want in terms of the combinations that the, the plan is saying you should be doing, yeah, switch it back into gear mode and, and do it that way. Okay, makes sense. Um, next, we have a question from Lisa who says, I don't have a cardiorespiratory fitness score on my profile. I have done some of the plans and tests. How do I work it out? Um, you, you, you've done a test. If you've done a test, it should have updated your profile. Um, what I suggest you do is, is maybe you've, done, you've, you've, you've probably done um, the test I haven't got the CRS, CRS score in. Do this, the health assessments of max test, and that will put you a CRS score up there as well. Okay. Now, there is a way of working it out, by the way, because every test, every test you do within the watt bike will give you a VO2 max relative figure. Um, if you send us your the relative figure, um, I can I can do it from a chart. We have a chart um, which is built into the app for the health assessment uh, submax test. 
but there is a chart by which we can compare it based on your, on, on, on your, your age and gender. Okay, yeah, Lisa, why don't you get in touch with us um, at marketing at walkbike.com and uh, we'll help you work it out. Um, let's see, that was another, we had, we had another question about if you finish the advanced plans, we've covered that. Um, so JB wants to know, when running a test on a pro or a trainer, will the Hub app stop the test if the cadence targets are not met? Uh, no, no. Um, you, you've got free reign on the cadence, to be honest. What, um, what you need to do is, is keep the wattage where it needs to be. Uh, make sure it's close to the wattage as, as, as possible. You can, in theory, use any combination of resistance uh, um, and, and cadence, and the same on any of the other bikes, to be honest. Um, what is key is keeping the, is keeping the, uh, uh, the wattage. Um, the cadence charts for the pro and the trainer and, and the icon in particular are, are recommended, but you don't have to do it that way. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I think that's all the questions that have come through. If anyone does have any other questions, please send them through now. Um, or again, get in touch with us um, via email and we can answer any questions you may have there. Okay, yeah, we've got a question. Yeah, I was actually thinking about this as we were speaking about it. So Charles is just asking the, um, what's the difference between ergo and gear mode? Because some people may not know this about our bikes. All oh, right, okay, yes. Yeah. Um, a gear mode um, is, is where it gives you free, free gear. It's like when you're on your bike, you can just switch your gears um, to whatever you, you, you want. Ergo mode controls it all for you. So we have some preset um, cadences. Um, and then, So the power comes on. So let Amy's test, for instance, um, the, the power we started at was 100 watts. Um, the ergo mode kept it uh, at uh, an 88 cadence roundabout for that. So we can fix the cadences a little bit more in ergo mode automatically. So you don't have to switch gears. Whereas if you're doing it in gear mode, you might get to a certain point where you have to change gear to get the right cadence power combination. Yeah, and just to um, make it clear for everyone, the um, gear and ergo mode is only available on the Atom or the, the Atom. Yeah, so you would, <laughs> or you would only have the gear mode on the Pro Trainer and the Icon. Um, so that's the difference between those. Um, we've had a question from Steve. Uh, it's an app related question about climbs specifically. I will need to ask the um, app team about that. So um, Steve, if you can send us an email at marketing at whatbike.com, I'll forward that on to the product team and see what they say. Um, had a few other questions come through. Um, so Neil is asking, why would I do the 10 minute health assessment as opposed to a second submax test to reset my levels? Um, yeah, you, 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 you could just do a, another submax test. Um, the 10 minute assessment um, was put in there for a particular medical insurer um, who wanted um, a, a, a test which showed the, the client had actually done uh, the 12 week um, uh, program. But no, you can, you can skip that one. Um, it, it, it only tells you, congratulations, you've improved your fitness. You would want to know by how much. And um, the only way of doing that is to do another test. So you would do another health assessment test um, and just see uh, how much it's improved. Okay, that makes sense. Um, got another question from Phil, who, who is asking, um, a few minutes easy riding before starting the submax, and which do you feel is better generally, a cadence-based warm-up or power-led? So do you actually need to warm up before the submax test? Uh, if you get the right starting point, um, probably not. Um, if you think about uh, a, a real beginner standing at 50 watts and, and 70 watts, um, they're barely turning the pedals. Um, you might do a few minutes just for familiarization of the bike, because you may not have been on the bike uh, before. Um, but if you set the test at the, the, the right level, the first two or three minutes will, will help you warm up. Um, I have no objections to people, and I do it myself with some clients, um, doing a small warm up, a five minute warm up. Um, but I, I tend to use, um, I, I, I do, do things slightly differently. I tend to use very, very low gears with higher leg speeds for warm-ups, uh, just to get the blood flowing around the body. Um, so mine, mine are always low, low gear um, uh, and a higher leg speed uh, than, than some. Uh, I think you'll be careful about uh, using uh, too low a cadence. 
because the pedal technique is, is influenced, the heart rate's influenced as well. Um, but yes, doing a small warm up just before you start is not going to be a problem. Okay, perfect. Any other questions from anyone else? Please send them through in the meantime and we'll cover them off. I think that might be it for now. Okay, so yeah, this concludes um, this specific What Bike webinar series. Uh, oh, we've actually got another question. <laughs> Let's cover that <laughs> one before we close off. Sorry, um, Sam. Sam, so Sam wants to know, what is the greater benefit of using a chest heart rate monitor against say a wrist monitor? Um, accuracy, uh, if, if, if you believe the research, which I do, um, chest belts tend to give a greater accuracy. Having said that, um, uh, the wrist um, uh, heart rate monitors um, are not too bad, to be honest. You, you lose some of the data. Um, I, I, I'd have to dig the research out, but I saw some research recently said 97% uh, accuracy from a chest strap, and I think it was just under 70% for a wrist uh, one. Um, you can work with that sort of data error, but I prefer not to. Um, so I always use chest, I have to say, I have to say, I always use uh, uh, chest belts. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, let's see, a couple more questions coming through. So Phil, so yeah, he was asking the cadence question. Um, so the cadence question was to do with general non-test based warmups. The uh, three minute warmup seems to be a fixed cadence and power increases by gear changes. I prefer a cadence-based increase using a warm-up gear. All oh, right, yes, yes, Phil, my, my friend Phil Kelly. Hi, Phil. Um, yes, um, I, I, I use a combination of the two, to be honest. So um, the warm-ups that we have in the app are based on you previously doing a test. So the, um, the, the, the cadence and the power are matched from your profile as well. Um, so you get a combination of the two. Um, Phil, Phil, Phil knows that I prefer to have um, a minimum RPM of 90 to start with, and then we go up from, from there for the warm-ups. But it's just a very low gear, but it's all relative to the test result as well, um, which is why you, know, you need to do a test first before you do anything else, because then it will give you all the metrics for, for the warm-ups that we have, um, you know, the standalone warm-ups we have in the app, and the warm-ups for, for all the sessions as well. Okay, thank you. So yeah, I think we've, we've reached the end of our time here today. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you all again for tuning in and engaging with us on this very important and interesting topic. Uh, we really hope that each and every one of you was able to take something away from the series, whether it be to improve your own health and fitness or the health and fitness of your clients and members. Um, we did get a question about this now and we will be running other webinars in the next couple of months um, specifically on pedal efficiency because uh, we have got, gotten that request quite a lot. Um, so if you haven't signed up to our newsletter or if you don't follow us on social media, I would recommend that you do so to make sure you don't miss out on any future webinar announcements. Uh, if you do have any more questions or if you want to find out more about what bike, you can visit our website in the meantime. Um, or if you want to discuss how you can use the health assessment in your daily practice or you have any other questions that weren't covered today, uh, please do email us at marketing at And thank you so much. Thank you.